scarless, entirely laparoscopic, pamproctocolectomy and extraspenteric dissection with perineal extraction of the specimen for cancer of anorectal junction arising on a background of long-standing ulcerative colitis. A 66-year-old male with a background history of long-standing ulcerative colitis underwent flexible sigmoidoscopy for a flare-up of symptoms. This found largely normal mucosa, but a fibroepithelial polyp at the anorectal junction. No synchronous lesions were detected on colonoscopy. Histology from the biopsy showed high-grade dysplasia with some features raising the possibility of deeper invasion. There was no evidence of metastatic disease on staging CT. MRI rectum could not visualize the primary tumor and gave overall TNM8 stage DX, N0, M0. After discussion and multidisciplinary meeting, the patient proceeded to surgery. Five ports were used in the operation, as shown in the diagram. A total of three 12mm ports were positioned in the umbilical region, right iliac fossa and left hypochondrium, respectively. Two 5mm ports were placed in the right hypochondrium and left iliac fossa. In this first part of the operation, the operating surgeon stood on the left-hand side of the patient and utilised the ports in left hypochondrium and left iliac fossa to mobilise the right colon. After establishing a new peritoneum, medial to lateral dissection of the right colonic mesentery was achieved. The iliacolic pedicle was identified, clipped and divided using two hemolog clips. Because the tumour is located in the anorectum, the achievement of complete mesocolic excision is not essential, and therefore the iliacolic vessels are ligated where it is anatomically convenient, in this particular case, at a mid-mesenteric level. The terminal iliac mesentery is then divided. allowing for the terminal ileum to be divided with endostapler. The operating surgeon then moves caudally and utilizes the ports placed in right and left iliac fossa to access the transverse colon. The surgeon then proceeds to divide the gastrocolic ligament to enter the lesser sac and mobilize the transverse colon. Here we can see the dissection of the mesentery of the transverse colon to approach the middle colic vessels. Multiple lymphatic and venous branches are divided, followed by ligation and division of the middle colic artery. We do not need to achieve a complete mesocolic excision and therefore the origin of the middle colic is not exposed. The surgeon then switches to the right hand side of the patient and utilizes the pores placed in right hypochondrium and iliac fossa to approach the splenic flexure and mobilize the left colon and rectum. The surgeon then proceeds with supracolic dissection approaching the splenic flexure. Careful movements allow for safe and effective mobilization of the colon, avoiding iatrogenic splenic injury. The next step involves the identification of the inferior mesenteric artery. Here we can see a medial to lateral dissection which culminates in high ligation of inferior mesenteric artery.
Finally, the laparoscopic part of the operation is completed by the mobilization of the rectum. The peritoneal reflection is divided and the section proceeds in the plane of total mesorectal excision to reach the level of middle to low rectal canal. The resection is completed by external dissection of the perineum in the cotocranial direction. This is not shown for privacy purposes. We have chosen to show a few seconds of the perineal dissection as seen on laparoscopic view. The specimen is extracted through the perineal wound. Next, the perineum is closed externally with interrupted heavy silk sutures. Again, this is not shown here for privacy purposes. Finally, the pelvic peritoneum is closed over a suction drain using an intracorporeal continuous suture. The operation is completed with the formation of an ileostomy through the incision for one of the ports in the right iliac fossa. The postoperative course was unfortunately complicated by the formation of an infected hematoma in the right rectus abdominis superior to the ileostomy. This was addressed with percutaneous drainage and antibiotics. The patient recovered well and follow-up CT at six months found no evidence of recurrent disease. Histology showed polypoid low and high grade dysplasia with evidence of focal superficial submucosal invasion in keeping with a well to moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. In summary, this case shows that in experienced hands, panproctocolectomy can be achieved laparoscopically with specimen extraction through natural orifices.